I'm going to show you how to use this free software to easily display everything at once to your D&D players while still being able to keep all of your notes and tabs private on your screen. This will work for running a display in person or online. I'm also going to show you how this can be used with a Chromecast for a wireless setup. Thank you so much to Improved Initiative for sponsoring this video. More on that later. Welcome to the table. I'm Kelly and I'm going to show you some stuff. Like my vulnerable side. Since I made the video about my DM screen with a built-in display, I've received a number of comments asking me to go more in-depth on how I was using OBS to run the display. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that this could be used in a number of different situations to make it easier to show pretty much anything to your players. There are three main setups I'll be going over. Plugging a monitor or TV directly into your computer, using a Chromecast for a wireless setup, and playing online. For those last two, we'll be using this cheap little adapter. But regardless of what you're outputting to, the first thing we need to do is set up the software. Software. We'll be using a free and open source streaming and broadcasting program called OBS Studio. The main window is your program monitor. In other words, what will be output to your players. Along the bottom, from left to right, you have your scenes, which are the presets that we'll be building, the sources, which will be things like initiative, monster art, or videos, the audio mixer, which is only relevant if you're playing sound through OBS, scene transition, this is the transition effect that will be used when you switch between different scenes, the standard is a fade, which is probably good unless you want to go nuts on some star wipes. Then the last box contains all the settings for starting a recording or a live stream, which we won't really be using. First thing we want to do is set the output resolution to match our TV or monitor. Click on settings, click on video, then change both the canvas resolution and output resolution to the resolution of the monitor or TV that we'll be outputting to. We want to do this first, otherwise if we do our layout and then change the canvas size, we'll have to resize all of our windows manually, which is a pain. Now we'll create a new scene by clicking the plus in the lower left corner and we'll call it combat. If you're playing on Line, the types of things that you'll want to display to your players will likely be different than when you're playing in person. But you can use this scene as a starting point and customize it to suit your needs. I'll be adding three things to this scene, a VTT, the player view from Improved Initiative, and a slideshow of monster art. For the VTT, I'm using Albert Rodeo. I'll grab the share link, hit the plus in the lower left corner of the source box, select browser, then paste my link into the URL field. For the height, I'll set it to 1080, which matches my output display, and the width I'll set to 1200. One important note, the value you put in here will tell OBS the size you want to load the web page at, which can be different than the size that it is displayed at on your monitor. So if I put in 100 and 100 here, and then I drag the red box to resize it, it's loading the web page at 100 pixels by 100 pixels, and then scaling it up a ton, so that's why it looks like garbage. You should try to roughly set the correct size here rather than dragging the red boxes to resize. If you do need to resize it later, you can double click on the source and then edit the width and height fields. This only applies to the browser type source in OBS because you're telling it what resolution to load the website at. Other sources like screen sharing or images will have an innate size, so they won't have these width and height fields while creating the source. You can just resize those ones by dragging the red squares. Now you can see that it has shown up in my program window, but I can't click on it to join the session. Anytime you want to click on stuff inside of a browser source, you need to right click on it and then select interact. Then it'll bring up a separate window and you can click on stuff on the page. Now I'm going to join the session hide the UI on Albear and also zoom in a bit. Now I can move all my tokens around from my own browser window and it'll show up in OBS and also output to my players. Next thing is initiative. This only works for initiative trackers that have a player view, like improved initiative. I'll copy the player view URL, add a browser source, paste it in the URL field, change the size again, and click add. This is the perfect time to tell you about the awesome features of improved initiative, the sponsor of today's video, and legitimately one of my favorite TTRPG tools. Improved initiative is a full combat tracker that helps you track initiative, keep track of monster stats and abilities, roll attacks and damage, and track HP. My favorite feature is the stat blocks that are embedded right into the initiative order with rollable attacks and abilities. This has doubled the speed of my combat encounters, which means there's less downtime between my player's turns. My second favorite feature is the one that we're using in today's video, the player view. You can easily copy the player view link and send it to your players or use it in your OBS setup so your players can see exactly what's going on and when their turn is coming up. This has helped me speed up my combats as well because it has reduced the number of times one of my players is caught off guard by the fact that it's their turn. My players can easily see what that their turn is coming up and prepare for what they want to do. Improved initiative is free to use but if you sign up to the Patreon in the Epic tier you get some pretty nice extra features including the D&D Beyond importer so you can import all of your purchase monsters from D&D Beyond into 
into improved initiative, account sync so all of your content syncs across all of your devices, and customization options for the player view. It's really cool being able to customize your player view to match the theme of your campaign, including changing a bunch of the element colors, adding player portraits next to your players, and even adding a full screen splash when it's their turn to really grab their attention. Head to the link down in the description to try out improved initiative and speed up your combat encounters. Okay, this is a lot of technical details and it feels like it's getting boring, so I'm just gonna see how many dice I can stack on top of each other while we do this. Anyways, back to this. If you were trying to display a website and the text is super small, instead of a browser source, you can add a screen capture source and then just capture a specific browser window. Then you can zoom the text on that page by holding command or control and pressing the plus key. The larger text will then show up in OBS. The last thing we'll add is a slideshow of monster art. I recently came across this website called MythJourneys.com, where this artist has all kinds of character and monster art for D&D and other fantasy, and they allow you to use it for free. So I've downloaded a bunch of images to a folder on my desktop called Monster Art. I'll add a source, image slideshow, change the duration to 4 seconds, scroll down to the sources, and click Add Directory. Now I'll scale and position it so that it fits under the initiative. And that's the combat scene done. If we click Scene, which is the empty default scene, everything fades to black, which is great. Then when you're ready to start combat, you just click combat. You can also set up the default scene with some art and make that your default DM screen. This art is from Reddit by u slash sedriminator. I've linked the post down in the description. You can repeat the steps above to create different scenes for different things that you anticipate happening in your session, like ambient videos off of YouTube, image slideshows of fantasy art depicting different terrain, or a slideshow of art of your characters if you have character portraits. By the way, that's something that my group did for our current campaign. We commissioned portraits for each of our characters. There are so many wonderfully talented artists out there. It wasn't very expensive, and it was so cool to see our characters brought to life. We knew we'd be playing these characters for at least a couple of years, so it was really worth it. Okay, now that you have everything set up, let's actually get this outputting to your display. So if you're connecting your display directly to your computer, like if you built my DM screen, or if you're plugging a cable from your TV or monitor directly into your computer, then all you have to do is make sure nothing's selected on the window, right click on the program window, go to full screen projection, brackets preview, select your monitor, and that's it. If it says brackets source, that means you have one of your sources selected and it will only output that source. So just make sure no sources are selected and that it says full screen projection brackets preview. If you have a Chromecast and you want to have a wireless setup, or if you're playing online, then that's where this thing comes in. With a Chromecast, you can cast your entire screen by clicking on the Sources button in the Cast menu. The downside is you have to share your whole screen. If you're on a laptop, this means your only screen will be up on the TV or display, and you can't have any private notes or look up stuff without everyone seeing. These little adapters are called Virtual Display Adapters, or sometimes Dummy Plugs. They make them for HDMI or DisplayPort, depending on what you have on your computer. This plug tells your computer that there's a display plugged in, even though there isn't. So you can plug this in, select to extend your display so you have a second desktop, then output your OBS to that virtual display, and then cast that screen from Chrome. Now your OBS output shows up on your TV wirelessly, and you can keep all your little secrets to yourself on your laptop. Now the last use case is for playing online. Although the types of things you'll want to show your players will probably be different, like you probably won't be sharing a VTT because your players will be logged into the VTT directly, it's still really nice to have a place where you can show stuff to your players without having to drag windows around. When playing online, I like to display the player view of initiative and monster art. That way my players don't have to have an extra tab open for the initiative, and I can show the art that I want to without having to keep dropping it in the chat. You can use one of these little dongles to create a virtual monitor to output OBS to, and then screen share that virtual monitor in Discord or whatever you're using. That way you can still have all of your monitors private and only the stuff in OBS gets shared. You could also use OBS the way it was intended and create a YouTube live stream and and then share the link with your players, but I've found that the huge lag makes it unusable. I prefer to use screen share because it's pretty much real time. Speaking of playing online, if you want some tips on leveling up your online D&D setup, like improving your sound and lighting, and some handy programs that I use, you should check out this video here. I appreciate you.